Do you know that each Americans consume bread about 53 pounds annually? No wonder now bakery or even coffee shop is selling a massive amount of bread. Are you the one who loves bread and consume bread maybe for your daily basis? Now I'm gonna tell you which bread is the healthiest. Is it multigrain, whole wheat, or sourdough? Hi everyone, welcome back to our lovely channel Triple H, how to be happy and healthy And with me, Dr. Hans, as your nutritionist and functional medicine Now I'm gonna tell you about like which bread is the healthiest Because like nowadays there are many types of bread If you want one of the bread lover just like me You will know that there are like uh, some types of bread that like uh, nowadays like uh, sell in a like a large amount such as like a multigrain then whole wheat and sour dough so i'm gonna tell you about like uh, what is grain exactly basically because like uh, everyone like maybe you often heard about grains but you don't really know what is grain is so grain actually is a seed that harvested from a grain producing plant such as like a wheat or oat like that many types or even corn is like a like classified as a grain as well actually if we are talking about the whole grain there are three edible parts in the whole grain the outer layer named as bran so is it like um, the, the layer that contain rich in a fiber and also B vitamins and also antioxidants? Then when we are going like uh, the deeper, we will find the germ. This germ is the embryo of the grain and the innermost layer of the seed. So the germ contains like a protein, then fat, minerals, and also B vitamins. So actually like the brand and the germ is like a, the healthier part. And we when we go inside, we will find the endosperm. Yeah, the endosperm is like a, the most abundant in the grains because this is like a, the largest part of the seed. And it contains like a protein and the most of all is carbohydrates. So if you're asking about like a, multi-grain about multi-grain bread is it healthy well first of all um, i'm gonna ask you about like uh, how much grain inside the bread so because like uh, if you find in your favorite bakery or your favorite coffee shop uh, for your breakfast or your brunch you drink like a cafe latte with like um, some bread actually like a uh, how much grain inside your bread because like uh, so far that I learned that I doing my own research because I love bread as well. Actually, the grain inside the multigrain, actually 50 to 90 percent, it contains or it's made from refined wheat flour. Tada! <laughs> now maybe you're surprised because maybe you used to be expect that like it's content of like a whole grain just like what i what i shared to you before contents from like uh, the bread and the germ but the fact 15 to 90 percent it contains from refined wheat flour and only 10 percent it contain or maybe like uh, for for the sprinkle uh, on the bread it contain oat then sunflower seed pumpkin seed corn etc and maybe by then it will look healthy, isn't it? <laughs> so the second thing is like, a, what is the feeling or maybe the topping of the multigrain? Some of them like a contain like a, the topping is used with nuts, seed, or maybe uh, the filling with dry fruit, like a, such as like a cranberry, dried cranberry, dried blackberry, mulberry, and etc. And also, some of them filled with processed cheese, cream cheese, cheddar, then like uh, blue cheese. I think blue cheese is better, right? 
But like uh, I find it hard to find the real cheese inside it. Most of them like a uh, processed cheese and maybe even chocolate chip or etc. Then the third point that you need to know is like how much chemical inside it. Because like everyone is like a uh, freaking out with the calories, like uh, how much calorie that like uh, in a in a piece of your bread or in a slice of your bread. But actually like that's not the main point that I want to address right now. Because like uh, everyone has like a different daily need intake. Everyone has their own purpose. But what I want to concern right now is about like the chemical inside it. Because like I found many preservatives, flavor enhancer, even they call it like a natural flavoring. Yeah, sounds good, right? <laughs> then emulsifier, then even the antioxidant, it's also synthetic. I, I, I'm not surprised about it. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> so. I think that's some of the main question that you need to ask to yourself or maybe to the seller when you want to buy the multi-green bread. Then let's go to the next bread that I want to uh, talk about in the section. It's about the whole wheat bread that everyone knows that uh, it must be healthier, right? Well, if you compare to the white bread, of course, definitely it's healthier because like uh, we are not going to talk about the white bread. It's out of chart right now. But let's talk about whole wheat bread that everyone knows that that's the healthier choice. Yeah. The first question is also the same. How much whole wheat inside it? Because like a uh, 100% whole wheat. Yeah, I can say it's like a uh, much, much be healthier, but in every place is like uh, at least the commercial whole wheat contain about 10 to 50 percent the maximum rate the maximum scale then the 50 percent to 90 percent is also refined with flour just same as the multi-green maybe like uh, even a little bit higher but not too much then the second thing is about the phytic acid that contain. If if you get the higher higher concentration, how, higher percentage of whole wheat, uh, the next step is about the phytic acid because phytic acid is like a contain in a bran and a germ in the outer layer of the grain. Then it block absorption of some minerals such as zinc, iron, and another minerals that actually like it's vital on your body. So if you eat more, you have to compensate more. Then everyone like, uh, I think, concerned about this right now. Yes, I mean gluten. Yeah, because actually gluten is like a very abundant in a whole wheat since like uh, gluten actually is a protein in the wheat. So now I'm going to tell you about more about the bread. So. Gluten is like uh, the protein that like uh, comes from two amino acid, which is gliadin and glutenin. And there are many studies right now that like are uh, talking about gluten is like a uh, have the opi opioid effect stimul stimulating our our appetite, like a uh, block our leptin and etc. And gluten itself, like uh, it has like uh, some tendency especially for people who have celiac disease or even like a non-celiac but gluten sensitivity. So if you are the one who have like a, one of them, I think you have to pay attention more. And last, how about like a sourdough? Yeah, sourdough is like um, maybe one of type of the bread that uh, quite much as well like a uh, Usually we, we consume it with like a tea, like a, with a milk maybe, or maybe with like a, some like a hot beverages because it's more like um, comfortable. But is it really healthy? Okay, first you need to know about like a, what is it made of? Because like a sourdough is like about the process, but it's not determined about like a, the source of the bread. So some of sourdough it made by whole wheat, some of them like uh, made 
uh, from like a refined wheat flour, just like another bread. So you need to find out first, like about the more whole wheat content, of course, uh, is it, it it's it will be healthier than like a refined wheat flour if it's like a, the the biggest part of the sour to content. Then what kind of yeast? Yeah, because like uh, actually all kind of bread like uh, have yeast inside it, and some of sourdough bread they use like a mixture of the like uh, the normal yeast and some of them like uh, get like uh, the pure sourdough yeast and of course the one who use the sourdough yeast the pure it will be like uh, the best sourdough then because sourdough the process is fermented it's about like a two to three days so actually this fermentation that this fermentation process it would like uh, have the better impact for your gut microbiome yeah because like uh, it it contains like a uh, prebiotic and probiotic as well if, if it's if it's good like uh, through the good fermentation process and this fermentation process will reduce the gluten inside the bread as well then last but not least, it's about like a what's inside it, just like another bread. Because like uh, if if it's uh, the the filling with the choco chip, with the cream cheese, the processed cheese, with a dried food that's sweetened, yeah, of course it's not good as well. But if you got the the plain one, or maybe just sprinkle with nuts and seed, I think all is good, right? So for the sum up, which one is the healthiest? Is it like the multigrain, the whole wheat, and the sourdough? Well, I think now you know after the short explanation from me, sourdough is the winner. Yeah, because it contains less gluten, it has like a low lower insulin spike, and it's like a gut friendly to your like a microbiome. But the next question, can you eat whatever you want? Because like uh, I'm sure like everyone will ask me about this question. Oh, because sourdough is the healthiest. Now I'm gonna eat sourdough every day. Of course not. <laughs> yeah, because what? Because like uh, there are many like offenders or like uh, substances inside the bread, like uh, alpha proteinin, trypsin inhibitor, peroxidase, thyrodexin, and etc. etc. Which I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna give you the link below if you want to read more about like uh, what's inside the bread like uh, there are many substances chemical substances that you need to aware because uh, it tends to give you like a more inflammation especially chronic inflammation for your body but i'm not gonna tell you but right now because it will be like a long video <laughs> and bread is 90 percent approximately contain carbs so like uh, every carbs i think I often tell about this, like uh, every carbs will break down into glucose in your body. So if you just like uh, eat bread all eat bread all day long, or, or maybe like uh, you are really really into bread, you will consume like uh, most of your macronutrients is about carbs, and you have to pay attention with your health condition, especially your metabolic health, right? So. How do you eat it? It's really, really important. If you eat it with butter, like because like uh, many Americans like uh, used like a uh, used to eat with the uh, bread and the butter, and many people like uh, blame the butter. It's not about the the butter on your bread. It's about the bread under your <laughs> the the bread under your butter. So it's uh, like a uh, the really main point. Like many people think that butter. It's a fat and fat is a, our enemy. It's like especially saturated fat. If you eat bread and butter all together, it will create the ages. So ages is an advanced glycation and products, which is this one will like uh, being the caramelized of the will caramelize the sugar that break down from your bread that will like uh, make your red blood cell like a uh, very sticky cannot bend and it will like uh, make the clog in your arteries and it will come the cholesterol and and so on and so on so this one is like uh, again it's not the butter on your bread it's a bread under your butter that's create the issue 
Then if you eat with the veggies, uh, it will be better because it will like uh, lower the glycemic index on the bread, especially if you eat like uh, the bread, the the whole the refined wheat flour bread. <laughs> That's what I mean. I'm sorry. Then if you eat with a meat or maybe egg or fish, it it will also better because it's also like a lower the glycemic index and you will you will get the protein as long as you get the right meat, not the processed meat or maybe ultra processed meat. Yeah, that's I think uh, the combination, how you eat the bread, it's really, really matter as well. So, and last but not least about the health condition. This is like the thing that I always like to tell my patient because like a uh, many patients that come to me they they have they already have a health concern health condition such as like a heart disease atherosclerosis arrhythmia valve disorder and etc then maybe if you have like a metabolic disease like a diabetes type 2 diabetes especially or maybe like a alzheimer that now is known is classified as type 3 diabetes or maybe you have like a, an autoimmune disease, like a celiac, psoriasis, rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and etc. This is the health condition that we need to be more concerned when we consume bread of you if you are a bread lover, because like a, just like me, I'm a bread lover. So I really pay attention with like a, how you eat it, like a, the overall macronutrients and micronutrients in your daily basis because if you are just focus on the a piece of the puzzle only bread you will lose the bigger picture so i always tell my patients about like uh, if you love bread if you're if you cannot like uh, get out of the bread <laughs> in your daily basis actually it's okay if you still like uh, pay attention in the in the bigger picture in the overall so you can still eat bread but like uh, how you compensate with the another lifestyle like uh, how you create your meal plan that's why like uh, if you are more concerned about it you can you can find me on my instagram you can like a uh, cling uh, click on the my my link bio in instagram and by then like uh, i can help you by like uh, the personal consultation so i can like uh, create the personalized meal plan for you and uh, by then, if you have like a health condition that you are concerned, you still can eat bread like uh, by arranging your like a uh, personalized meal plan. So by this, all these explanations, I hope now you more understand about which bread that you need to choose. And I hope you will get healthier in your daily basis. I'm Dr. Hans. See you and stay healthy.